carbs, berries, seeds, nuts, basically anything that was edible that we could boil down and make a tea out of. Uh, and then grass-fed remnants, and the warriors would eat the organs first. Right? The heart, the liver, where the nutrients are most dense. I heard Chris Kessler talk on Joe Rogan recently, and this is a spiritual brother that's been through many issues with his own autoimmune. He's one of the top guys in um, nutrition today, Chris Kessler. And uh, he was saying that vegans would, they would have the healthiest diet on the planet if they would eat three ounces of mollusks and organs a week. Okay. So there's certain things in nutritional foods that we can't get from plants. So again, this isn't a philosophical discussion. Do the best you can uh, in the moment. Uh, Above ground, above ground vegetables and high quality protein is the workaround, right? Because the, the below ground vegetables and uh, the nightshades, they, they have some issues with, with the guts. And those are small caveats and nuances. You don't really need to pay attention to that. Ultimately, you need real food and you need high quality protein wherever you get it from. And then ultimately, you wanna know how your nutrition program's working out, your philosophy's working out? Take off your clothes, get naked in front of the mirror, and ask yourself who you are in relation to your ideas. And then just look how good they're working. Okay. That's the big medicine ball that I have for most everyone. Okay. Ideas are a dime a dozen. Okay. How's it working in the present moment? Okay. Does that make sense? Yes? Yes? Okay, nutrition, again, I could teach days on that, uh, but ultimately, you want clean food. Put that as number one. You wanna fall in love with yourself this fall, right? Put organic nutrition as a non-negotiable, right? I'm out camping right now, the kids want s'mores. Sometimes I, you can get the organic marshmallows at the health food store sometimes, but you know, give them a little bit of joy, Okay, I bend the rules. Well, it's like the only time, right? Because I don't want to be the complete Nazi dad, right? <laughs> you know? So I bend the rules just a little bit. But for the most part, it's 99.9% .9 with me, right? That might be too stressful for other people, right? And remember, the final frontier is mind over matter. So if you're eating garbage, you know, love on yourself. You know, I know I'm eating garbage. You know, mind over matter. Do the best you can in the moment. 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm spending my money on organic nutrients, period. Non-negotiable. Make sense? Yeah. We have a lot of workarounds uh, with the company Carolina and I work with. and get you all these nutrients delivered to your door, and then you only have to source one main meal a day. Um, okay, nutrition. Again, I'll be over here for, for, for questions, but we got a lot of uh, things to cover, and I want to make sure I get to it all. Sleep. Lots of research on circadian rhythms. 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. is optimal. Psychological, uh, physical rest is 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And then psychological rest uh, is through the morning. So optimization around the celestial realms. Your hormones, any ladies out there who's like, I gotta get my hormones in check. I need more better hormone health. Look no further than the, than the sun and the moon. Right? Make sure that you're harmonized with the celestial realms because your hormones, chemical messengers wired inside your body are directly related to the rising and the falling of the sun. Cortisol rises first thing in the morning. Whether you're, whether you're awake or, or not, or whether the, the windows are open or not, your nose hairs, your arm hairs, your skin, it's gonna detect all of that. So, um, when you're in your bedroom, take all the electronics out. Learn where the breakers are, where your freezer and your refrigerator are, and the non-negotiable things that can't be turned off. Hit all your breakers at night, and then tell me how you sleep. Hit them all. The dirty electricity that's in any building unit, uh, I can feel it now that I'm used to turning these off. I had black mold exposure from 2010 to 2013, right after I had two children. So anybody had an injury out there, you know, autoimmune, any of that stuff, I had it full blown, baby. 
I'm a walking testament that you can cure yourself from anything. I had chronic fatigue, I had neurological issues with my legs, and I'm the certified health nut, I'm a barefoot walker. And I, my legs started giving me spaghetti legs, I was like, oh no, no, I've gotta solve my own problems. So I programmed my mind and then I started to unravel everything that was affecting that. So don't, I learned not to mess with my sleep, especially after having a couple of kids and the black mold exposure. So sleep, uh, get the electronics out of your bedroom, make it as comfortable as possible. No stimulating artwork in your bedrooms, etc. Put some crystals, some good, uh, maybe uh, essential oils, you know, things that remind you of peace and harmony, put in your room. Everything else, get it out, right? Leave that for your office or your play space or whatever else. Uh, make your make your bedroom sacred. We spend you know a third of our lifetime sleeping, and sleep. I tell you, newsflash: we live in a culture. You'll sleep when you're dead. Hustle and grind, right? No. You want health? Most people today are facing burnout. I'm going to teach you some great exercises uh, for movement. Uh, most people are facing burnout. And I'll get into the seven factors of stress very soon. Most of the factors of stress are invisible. So uh, don't mess around with your sleep. Try the electricity at the bare minimum. Find out where your Wi-Fi device is and try and hardwire your house as well. If you have the capital to get an electrician into the house or your Verizon or Comcast guy or whatever, have them come in there and hardwire your house. It's just better for you. You don't have the, 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 the Wi-Fi and the, the uh, electromagnetic radiation going through there. Uh, Movement. So my philosophy on movement is uh, move it or lose it. The body in motion stays in motion. You got an injury, it's a sore spot, move it. Mobilize through the pain. Another lesson I learned from uh, uh, Ryan Hughes, the motocross champion, and uh, Robbie Madison, who broke all of uh, Evil Knievel's records. Uh, he jumped the Caesar Palace jumps things with his motorcycle. Keep it moving, baby, even if you've got the biggest injuries. These guys have broken every bone in the body uh, and have come back and they just keep moving. They definitely got into the yoga and the qigong because they needed more gentle movements than extreme you know, muscle building activity. Uh, so uh, there is no bad exercise. It's only the exercise that you have ability, athletic ability to perform. I see people doing Boot camps in the park, you've got fat, skinny, tall, women, men, old, young, all doing the same exercises, usually a lot of burpees and stuff like that. That's a high performance athletic uh, uh, performance activity. Most people don't have the motor recruitment to be doing stuff like that. They're sitting and their hip flexors are tight, they're eating crappy food, their, their abdominal wall is blown out, and they lose their, their, their ass, the glutes go next. And so this is the, the common denominator in our culture, and then you know, I see a lot of trainers get their hands on these people and they're doing high performance athletic uh, uh, activity. I talk to a lot of them, oh, I pulled my back, I threw out my shoulder, etc., etc. So be very mindful of the activity. Make sure the body's warmed up if you're going to get into something a little bit more strenuous and that you have the mobility and the musculature to perform these types of activity. No bad exercise, only the one that you have the athletic ability and available energy. That's the other thing you want to assess. Yes, you'll get the endorphin rush from working out, but uh, working out is a stress. And so what I recommend is recognizing the difference between working out and working in. So everybody stand up. <laughs> Make sure you have enough uh, space. You guys can space it out over here. So you're only gonna need your space. So. We're going to do a gentle movement back and forth. This is called Zen Swing. Make sure you don't hit anyone. Get into a position that staggers. Look to your neighbor. So the movement, 75% of your weight goes on one side. And then the other, you're moving through the toes. Your tongue is on the roof of the mouth. You're breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Eyes are on the horizon, so the twist goes up into the cervical units. And we're dropping into a movement meditation. No time for meditation? I get it. Right? I live in the modern world as well. 
no time for you know strenuous exercise, etc. Five to twenty minutes of this this a day. Five minutes will lubricate your joints and keep you mobile. It'll calm your nervous system, harmonize the biological oscillators, the mind, the heart, and the gut. So you can roll up to a plate of food or a business conversation and be centered. Hence the word Zen swing, this puts you in a Zen state. It moves the cerebral spinal fluid up and down the spine as well as the synovial fluid. Lubricates the joints, the tendons, the connective tissue, mobilizes the fascia. Exercise is a necessity, not a luxury. The purpose of exercise is to move the lymph. The best exercise for the human being body is walking. Walking consistently will give you the same results. Well, I mean, muscle building results and flexibility results from yoga or weightlifting, those may differ, but walking will at least maintain your basic primal animal. Walking for long periods of time activates, I do believe it's the fast twitch muscles, which uh, help to regulate blood sugar. A client of mine did a lot of research on, uh, she had uh, diabetes in her family, did a lot of research, and so she decided to walk back and forth from work. It takes her about an hour, hour and 10 minutes every day, and her blood sugar issues went away. Somehow it activates the musculature so, so that it fires more cleanly and uses fuel uh, in, a, in, a, in a more efficient manner. So walking is the best exercise, but this will lubricate all the joints. If maybe you have a work break, it's five or 10 minutes, and remember, you can't do this wrong. Keeping the eyes on the horizon is a good point because that allows you to get the twist in the upper cervical. Tongue on the roof of the mouth, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. The slower you move, so play with your tempo a little bit. The slower you move, the faster chi moves. Chi means energy, gong means practice. This is an energy cultivation practice. So this is going to get into your, into your shoulder girdles, into your hip complex, your sacrum. It's gonna mobilize the joints. Just like water on granite, it will dissolve any kind of electrical impingements, musculoskeletal impingements. So five minutes a day will help lubricate the tissues, center the mind. 20 minutes a day will heal any problem that you have at all. Medical Qigong is real, go ahead and look it up. But it's all about the practice. I challenge you guys to 100 days of any of the chi exercises that I show you. 100 consecutive days, 10 minutes minimum. Once you complete that 100 day challenge, you will have the, the, the qigong in your life for the rest of your life. Let's do it. Let's do a little nuance on this one. Let's bend over a little bit. Same type of movement, back and forth, but you'll see the twist, it goes into your, your arms and your brachial plexus, all that nerve supply that goes down our arms. Play with gentle movements and positions on the neck so you can get a little bit of a stretch up into the neck. Scalenes, brachial plexus. Try and harmonize and synchronize the movements into your own impingements. Tongue on the roof of the mouth, breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. You cannot do this wrong. This is simply called, called moving your body. Okay, and then we're gonna go forward again. Watch out, you're not gonna hit anyone. So put the hands forward, and you're gonna get this into your shoulder head. So you can feel it in your shoulder head. And at the same time, turn that neck or the jawline. See if you can get some mobility into the neck. Wherever that sweet spot is, you know, if it, if it hurts, you've got to slow down. Just find out where that sweet spot is. Play with it. And then come back up to center. Eyes on the horizon. Twists going into the cervical units. Every joint in the body is moving. Coming up on the toes. 
play with the tempo, slow it down a little bit. All right, now we're gonna shake that out. Right, emotion, mind stores tension in the body. Right, that's the principle of yoga. Right, so we're unwinding all of our mental constrictions that show up as electromagnetic impingements or musculoskeletal impingements inside of either consciousness or inside the body. And this just frees it up. So a lot of the emotions can get stuck into the body. So I like to get the backside going, gets the love handles going a little bit. So just, if you can get the face and jaw into it, you just have to watch the face. You don't dislocate your jaw. Just don't be aggressive with yourself, right? I'm a little aggressive, I know, but uh, just be gentle with yourself, okay? So just, <laughs> Just let it out, right? Okay, now that nobody made a sound, it's a requirement that everybody makes a sound. All right, you guys ready? So, Woo. you guys are all a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let anybody catch you doing that in the park. <laughs> they might come come up to you and go, hey, do you know that certified health nut guy? Uh, okay. I'm going to show you a couple more moves uh, just because we're, we're mobilizing now. So this one I call ape hands. You're just going to gently toss your hands into the ground. It's going to open up your breathing by 50%. The Zen swing it's gonna improve your golf game by 50%. No lie, I'm telling you, lubricating those tissues, making sure there's no impingements. When you go out and hit those balls. So this is gonna help you, because oftentimes we're on the phone, we're on the computer, we're sitting, we're driving, everything gets stagnant. You know, I'm on the, this big camping ex excursion right now, I'm a week into it. It's amazing being out in the cold water and hiking in the mountains and doing all this cool stuff, but you know, five hours in the car, man, I feel like a wrap. You know, your hip flexors get tight, you're not using your glutes. So things can get stuck. So if you gotta go into a business meeting or maybe you gotta pick up your kids and have a stressful morning or something, just do a handful of these moves. It's gonna take the weight of the world off of your shoulders. And don't forget to be gentle, right? Some of us have shoulder injuries, stuff like that. You know, play with your own tempo, your own body. So ultimately, the earth recycles our garbage. And this can go into emotional garbage as well. So the earth has a negative redox potential. So energetically, Tai Chi wise, it's basically throwing a bunk emotions right into the earth. It's just going to recycle it, right? Eyes are closed, tongue is on the roof of the mouth, breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. You can do a hundred of these as a good marker. You can incorporate this into your Troy Casey Qigong 100 day challenge. You know, 10 minutes is the minimum, so you can do a little Zen swing. You could do these. Basically, anything you can do to mobilize your tissues and free yourself up from the impingements, let that be your chi practice, right? You go to China in the parks, and they're in there every morning, and there's some old guys, you know, some of them do the traditional, you know, movements, stuff like that, but then there's other guys that are working on their balance and stuff. You know, it's like a whole weirdo fest over there, which is normal, right? I don't know if you guys got a Chinatown here, but. In, San Francisco, those guys are out at 5 a.m. in the morning doing their Qigong right in the doorway. So it's a pretty amazing uh, thing to witness. All right, then you cross it over. And bring a little bounce into the knees and the hips as well, right? You want full mobility. You want full expression of the human apparatus until the day you die, right? How about that? And so, I encourage you guys to make this stuff up, okay? Because that's what I do. 
Okay? I, my mentor taught me a few of these basic moves, and I picked up a few more from some other Qigong masters on YouTube. Okay? And then I just incorporated them, right? Shake it out a little bit more. The shaking is considered bioenergetics. You can look into that. That's a good methodology. Tai Chi is more of a martial arts form. Qigong is, is really just any movement rhythmically that, that you set up. Um, has anybody, uh, anybody have a request for any of the other movements? Anybody watch my, my YouTube videos on this stuff? So I covered a couple of basic moves. Um, the Zen swing, eight hands. Um, anybody else want tutelage on? Yeah. Which one? Uh, okay, so passing of the cups, or don't spill the champagne. <laughs> here we go, you got a tray of champagne that's right here, right? Bring that up over the head, and then through. Don't spill the champagne. Trust me, I spill it. <laughs> but if you're working with the Qigong master, they're gonna put a teacup here. So this is gonna help with shoulder mobility. It's gonna help with right and left brain uh, hemispheres. Harmonization of right and left. It's best to do any kind of Qi exercises in the earth hour before sunrise or after sunrise, sunset. The chi field is highest near a body of water, wet grass. Practice it in the same place, in nature daily. It's great, same time, it's great. It's gonna up your chi energy a lot more. But here's the thing, with socks inside an office building, I don't care where you do it. Get mobility in the body. Optimal is out in nature. All right, other hand. That's champagne. Depending on where you're at, maybe one or two days to integrate both, but we'll give it a try right now. And it feels amazing once you get both of them going. You guys are at a gym, maybe you got a two pound or two and a half pound weight. You could also put that in there. So we'll go both. Close the eyes and really feel it. Spread the legs, toes move forward. Sit on your glutes, push off your heels. Go from side to side. Really get into your body. Tongue on the roof of the mouth. And move that neck in various ways. Get into your kinks. You can't do this wrong either, guys. If you're having trouble with both, go back to one. Just master the one. I do have to teach you one more exercise, guys. Who's got the time? The reason I want to teach you guys this exercise is because... 2.15. 2.15, okay. It's because uh, all the breath work and the Wim Hof stuff is really dramatic and it's great. And I recommend breathing however you can get it. Uh, but if you want to reprogram your diaphragm and your breathing apparatus, after being a mouth breather, or neck breather, or desk sitter, or whatever that, then we can do this. And we can do this, I'm only gonna do this for a few minutes because we've got a lot to cover. This is called the stork walk. So just get in line behind someone, maybe inside circle and outside circle, but it's just gonna go basically like this. We'll do it for a couple minutes just so you can get a feel. It's called the stork walk. You have five energy highways and they're represented in your fingers. So you keep them up here and then you're gonna breathe in Wings go up, you drop that energy here. 
You should be at full capacity. The breath will come up into the neck at the last part up here, and then you're going to exhale. And your breath should be completely empty here, right? So harmonize it with that. And we're all going to line up, and we're going to do a minute or two of this, OK? So go ahead and just make a circle. You could do this in, in place. Maybe we could do two circles, one insert. So it's going to look like this. Gentle gaze at the ground, tongue on the roof of the mouth. Give yourself permission when you're flying like a bird, that whole diaphragm is opened up, that rib cage is opened up. And if you're having trouble with balancing, that's good, because that's your survival mechanisms. Right? If we fall over and hit our head, we're dead. Just stagger, guys, if, if, there, if anybody's in your way. Can't do it wrong. It's just a basic movement we want to get down. So inhale, exhale. And this is very important for motor recruitment, retraining the human body. If you're having any trouble balancing, that's a good thing. Because as you get older, Broken hips, people falling over is a real issue. So this is gonna retrain the body. Get the breathing apparatus, the breathing mechanism aligned with your movement for human optimization. Right? This is about optimal living. This is about cellular respiration. Overall health is directly related to cellular respiration. Your ability to fill up the lungs and to breathe optimally feeds the mitochondria of the cells. When the mitochondria is pumping and humming, it takes in good nutrition and expels waste in an efficient manner. That's what you want. You want an efficient human body specimen. Right? So again, you can't do this wrong, but you do want to make sure that you can fly up. All those lungs are being completely filled. You're rewiring your nervous system, right? Exhale, your lungs should be empty when your hands come up to your diaphragm. And boom, empty. Gentle gaze at the floor will put you in a movement meditation. Breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. You can do a little Ujjayi breath to activate the vagus nerve as well. Okay, we're done with that, guys. As long as you got the general consensus, do that. <laughs> if you find yourself in the neck breather, mouth breather, you got neck pain, do that exercise for sure. Right? Very important, simple, simple exercise. Remember, the antidote to complexity, as we've created today in this world, is always simplicity. So go back the origins, or as my mentor in the Amazon said, when things go haywire in the world, as it is today, uh, man goes back to the origins. It goes back to our, our natural realm, and that's what this is all about. All right, I'm gonna start moving through this a lot faster because I always have sideline things. So, back to the nine pillars of health. One, passion, dream, legacy. Two, hydration. Three, nutrition. Four, sleep. Five, movement. I just covered that. Again, there no, is no bad exercise. And the body, uh, exercise is a necessity, not a luxury. Exercise is a necessity, not a luxury. The purpose of exercise is to move the lymph, interstitial fluid. A stagnant body of water turns into a cesspool. So it's important to move your lymph daily. Uh, breathing. So optimizing your, your, your breathing, uh, we did some breath work. Uh, before and we did the, the stork walk. Stork walk cannot be overlooked. Find a good place in the park or on the beach or whatever, you know, do that. Uh, you can do it as part of your daily Qigong 100 day challenge. Um, that will help you. But if you have breathing patterns, 
I would commit to 100 days of that. If you have uh, breathing pattern problems, or if you just want to optimize, just, just do that. It will really make a huge difference. Because you want to be belly breathing while you're asleep, while you're driving in the car, while you're stressed out, right? Oftentimes we get caught here. We're breathing from our neck. How do I know? Because I was a neck breather, right? I had to repattern. So, um, very important. So, uh, the breathing exercises, you want to optimize your, your breathing as much as possible. Uh, poor uh, respiration results into poor uh, cellular respiration, which results into premature aging. Who wants premature aging? <laughs> okay? Right? We live in a, a youth culture, so get your breathing optimized. <clears throat> it's good for everything. It's the first level of nutrition. Right? Sunlight and breath are ultimately. So no oxygen in three to five minutes, you're dead. No water in seven to 10 days, you're dead. No food for 40 to 50 days, you're dead. Right? So these are lack of support systems. So it's, it's, it's good to get down in, what, in physics, what they call first principles. These are first principles. They're non-negotiables. And that's what I'm teaching you at the pillars of health right here. Uh, so optimize your breathing, work towards that thinking. So it's important to program the human mind with uh, that which the heart desires and giving yourself permission to that. Thinking is catabolic. It will break the system down. And in our current structure, and there are no victims. So if I ever talk about something as you know, bad or good or whatever, the systems we've created that you know, I call for an upgrade on the systems, an evolution of the systems, uh, You know, it's about optimization. There is no real bad or good. And any bad, to me, is just spiritual fodder for our own awakening, right? Otherwise, I start playing the victim. And we're, we're not victims. We're extremely powerful co-creators imbued with the power of the creator. Plain and simple. They don't teach that in high school because they want you to get a regular job and work for the corporation, right? And or keep the systems in place that, you know, somebody's profiting from. Fine. You know, that's great. That's a great human experience and we all participate in it. I'm just calling forth a new order, if you will. No different than the Wright brothers wanting to fly like an eagle, right? I believe that we can have clean air, water, and soil and equitable, equitable systems. If people don't know what an equitable system is, I have a one-way ticket to Iraq, Afghanistan, Darfur, uh, the rainforest where it's burning right now, or anywhere else that we have coveted natural resources for our modern world. Right? So we can build optimization systems, we can. It's, uh, it may not be profitable for the dominant uh, industries, but that, that's, you know, evolution is always happening. <laughs> so, uh, so thinking is catabolic. So when you're going from one clickbait Instagram post to the next blog post to the next YouTube video or whatever, just remember uh, the new commodity is attention. Right? So people just want your attention ultimately. Uh, my philosophy is the industrial age is over with, long over with, right? Yet we're still educating our children in industrial age school systems, right? So that's number one. That's changing pretty quickly with the internet, but let's just be aware, right? The information age is over with too. Everything is on Google, basically. If not, you can find it pretty easily. I postulate we're moving into the age of authenticity. The age of implementation, becoming that what you would, that, that you are talking about. Otherwise, it has no ballast in reality, right? I've been in this movement for many years. I was a vegan for many years. You know, I practice yoga. Everything else, everything in the world is theory, hypothesis, conjecture, opinion. The only truth on this planet, from Descartes to Plato, is I am here, right now. Everything else is a little story about the past, or conjecture, or opinion, or hypothesis. Most of the scientific discoveries get overturned within 10 years or so when new information comes on. Right? So this is an ever-evolving spiral of consciousness, evolution. The Greeks called it gnosis, praxis, and telekis. One of the biggest spiritual traps that we can find ourselves in is, I've arrived! Right? 
big trap. The universe gave me a big kick in the ass a couple of years ago because I needed to keep going. Okay? We never arrive. Okay? We're ever evolving. Okay? Don't wait for that big pain teacher to come into your life to teach you that. And the pain teacher is always guiding us. The question is, are we listening? Right? It shows up as physical pain, emotional pain, etc. Relationships, etc. So uh, thinking is catabolic. The antidote to overthinking, and thank you for my brother for turning me on to this. He turned me on to a gratitude journal a couple of years ago when I had my ass handed to me on a platter. And I was on my knees, and uh, he turned me on to a gratitude journal. Three things you're grateful for, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. I did that religiously for about uh, six months, morning and night, and then I uh, did it once a day for about a year and a half. Uh, and it definitely changed my life. I just walk around with an attitude of gratitude, even if things suck, right? Because that's just an indication of my consciousness that needs to move around whatever sucks, that pain. Right? Pain is a teacher, it's an indicator. Hey, whoa, let me pay attention to that. Let me move this way, right? Tai Chi, right? You're moving with the energy, always. Something gets painful, that's just an alert to pay attention. Uh, another uh, good one for thinking, uh, thinking is catabolic, which means it breaks down. The system overthinking can break down the system, literally, right? Analysis paralysis. Uh, so uh, doing a vision board, I did this on my birthday last year and invited everybody over for the party. And so vision boards are great because again, it's your heart's desire, whatever little images, the mind stores uh, information in images. And so whatever the body, uh, whatever you can program uh, into the mind, uh, that will help you see it in the physical realm. So vision board is, is excellent. The I am statement that we worked on your purpose, dream and legacy is the first exercise. Uh, meditation, of course. You know, I spent many years doing Vipassana meditation. I love meditation. It's a tough sell to, to the modern guys, you know, to get people to just sit. That's why, like, in my classes, usually I'll start just sitting. Um, and you guys are probably all meditators anyway, so. Uh, but let me tell you, out in the public, to sell that to people, to slow down, to you know, close their eyes and do nothing, it's a tough sell. However, if you've got a good meditation practice, uh, there's a lot of studies on neuroplasticity. I spent six years studying Vipassana meditation religiously. I did 11 courses. It completely changed my nervous system. I highly advocate it. Um, so again, whatever meditation you can get into your life. Again, walking is the best exercise for the human being. It's also a movement meditation. If you add barefoot to it, it just, it, 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 um, you know, it kills multiple birds with one stone. So walking barefoot is an excellent uh, movement meditation. And then also for thinking, uh, rem remember that comparison is the thief of joy. And so when you're on the social media, it, you know, it, uh, it's got addictive tendencies and it's also got the technology of uh, Vegas slot machines. So it's programmed to capture your attention. Remember the new commodity is attention and we're moving into the age of authenticity and the gift economy, which is what I postulate. And so uh, where brothers and sisters give what they love to do from their heart, right? Some people like to cook food, some people like to take care of children, some people like to educate children, some people like to build homes or carpentry, etc. The number one, does anybody know what the number one uh, feared thing for a human being is? Mediocrity. Huh? Mediocrity. Oh, well, that, for me, that is for sure. <laughs> Not being loved? No, public speaking. So, and I don't have a problem with that, right? So that we all have our each unique gifts and we'll give that. You know, people say, hey, well, you know, you're calling forth the gift economy, you know, uh, well, that'll never work and some people will wanna sit around the house and be lazy and, you know, who's gonna clean the public, you know, walkways? Well, the fact of the matter is I can put my ego aside. If we have the gift economy, I live on the Santa Monica Beach in LA I love it there. If I gotta clean the bathroom block twice a week or twice a month or whatever we deem, whatever system we create, I don't have a problem with that, right? Because I like a clean society. I like a beautiful beach, right? I can put my ego aside and, and do something for the community. We can create systems that are beneficial for the all without the fake currencies that we have right now. We can. Yes, we can. 
if the Wright brothers can fly like an eagle, and Steve Jobs created those handheld devices that we all have, right? Then we can create whatever the heart desires. That is the truth. So uh, thinking, comparisons, thief of joy, I'm gonna get into a little bit of that on social media uh, with the seven factors of stress. Uh, and then we wanna focus on uh, loving relationships or right relations as the uh, Indians called it. Uh, so uh, we're in relationship with everything including each other. And so uh, working with forgiveness and understanding uh, if people are short-tempered or I am short-tempered in the moment, right? Work with more understanding uh, and working towards peace. So I went through a divorce about a couple of years ago and you know we were at each other's throats and we couldn't solve our problems together. And, uh, and the trap is, and especially if you deal with courts and anybody's got any money, Forget about it. It's World War III and the cottage industries around divorce are going to be making money off of your argument. So they like to keep that. So I was like, oh my God, that's society. And we have a little bit of a dysfunctional society, or as Jay Krishnamurti said, it's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a sick society. So I said, okay, if that's the case and I just got divorced, then how can I handle divorce the opposite of the dysfunction that we have in the world? So I went towards absolute peace and harmony as is my dominant prayer for my me and my ex-wife as fast as possible. So a couple of years later and a lot of plant medicines, um, we, were, we were able to come to a much better working relationship. So however you can solve your problems with your relationships, uh, you're gonna rest easier at night. Remember, uh, resentment is like drinking poison and thinking that the other person's gonna be, you know, suffering. <laughs> It's a little crazy making. Right? So if we can just forgive and you know let go of resentments, that's going to free yourself. And ultimately, everything with what I'm teaching and sharing with you guys is full human liberation. I'm not look. I'm not looking for followers at all. I'm looking to uh, liberate humanity ultimately. And so we want to be free. So work on forgiving people as much as best as you can. And so and if you really want to know what your dark side or your shadow is all about. Simply look into the mirror of your relationships and the ones that you're having the most problems with. Because there's your shadow. Each and every time! <laughs> right? Right? You forget that? You're like, oh, why is this person being a fucking asshole? And then, oh, what asshole do I have living inside of me? <laughs> Never forget that, right? Because it's so easy to blame the other person. I got caught up in plenty of that, complaining and blaming, and again, Thanks for my brother giving me that exercise because it really changed my life. Gratitude journal. Uh, the ninth pillar of health is nature. Nature heals everything is my general philosophy. The addendum to that is death is a part of life. The internet is full of clickbait and people going, what about this? What about that? So I say nature heals everything and people are like, what about four, stage four cancer? And so, well, death is a part of life, right? And so, and ultimately, there is no death. At the highest realization, we're just going from one dimension into the next. But that's for a complete other class. But you're sick, get into the natural world. Eat natural food, drink natural water. The body requires water, not anything else, really. Everything else is entertainment. Teas and sodas and kombuchas and all that stuff. The body needs water. Get into nature as much as possible. Go camping. And Hoda Clark's book, Cure for All Diseases, she wrote like 30 years ago. She's like, if you've got stage four cancer or leukemia or this, that, and the other thing, go live outside. The formaldehyde that's in furniture and this, and this nice yoga floor uh, flooring and, and all the manufacturing, those air ducts get uh, moisture in there and, and mold can proliferate and all that stuff. So you want to solve your biggest problems, just get into the frequency and vibration of nature. Do your Tai Chi and Qigong in nature. Do your barefoot walking in nature as much as possible. I mean, you guys live in a great natural environment here. So nature will solve the majority of your problems. And again, the first levels of nutrition, guys, are sunlight and then breath. Sunlight and breath. So take your clothes off in the sun as much as you can. Get as much sunlight into the body. Um, so I covered the nine pillars of health. I'm gonna go through the six factors of stress. The first one is digital communication. This is brand new, it's only 10 years old. Maybe 15. And maybe you got some coders out there that got 20 years into digital communication.
education. But everybody else is a good 10 years into it. Social media started about 10 years ago. This is a brand new stress. Lots of research done on psychological uh, aspects of going from one interface to the next. It takes 20 minutes for the human mind to focus. Once you break that focus, it takes so much energy to bring that focus back. And so if you're going from email to, I run my businesses on social media, so I'm gonna be very mindful when I do this. And actually, by the end of the day, my brain gets scrambled. And again, there's been a lot of research. We have about 20 good decisions a day before mental fatigue sets in. You're an executive or you own your business, right? So you're probably pretty aware of that. The Zuckerbergs and the, and the Bill Gates of the world, they have a uniform. Whatever that uniform is, that's one decision they don't have to make every day. Zuckerberg, I think, wears jeans and a, and a, and a hoodie. And so, uh, so a lot of this research came out from this high performance. Uh, Carolina, do you have any water? Like that, my glass jar has some water. <laughs> so really understanding and being honest, thank you, Carolina. Uh, being honest with your uh, with your digital communications. Um, we just want to be honest about uh, optimizing our lives, healing ourselves. So digital communication. What I tell people: if you're not making money on social media, get off. Of it. Unless you can regulate it and it's part of your entertainment program and it's part of your de-stress program where you just want to see friends and family and you know voyeurism and you know whatever. If that really feeds your soul and it's something you need, go for it. Otherwise, it it is a stress, and I recommend going off of it. Plain and simple. Uh, the, 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 the tech companies they know how to use uh, technology from Vegas, it's like slot machine technology, when you see the little blue icons or notifications, it's addicting. There's a dopamine rush, and they know that. So everything, uh, the seven factors of stress, because stress can stimulate us for growth, but elevated chronic cortisol will break the system down. And most people are kind of on the edge of that, especially uh, if their sleep patterns aren't in line, if they're not regulating their digital communications and electromagnetic radiation, the blue screens, blue light affects the hormones, which affects cortisol. So if you got blue light coming in after the sun goes down, this is gonna mess with your hormones. Does that make sense? It's going to add another stress to the body. So stress is a good stimulus for growth, elevated, long-term, chronic stress, chronic cortisol, chronic elevated cortisol will break the systems down and throw the body in, in, uh, out of whack. Physical stress, you know, um, throw out your back, you might not have the musculature to do certain exercises, that's why it's important uh, to work with a good trainer that understands this. Um, also, you know, people think that yoga is, is, is not a, a workout, but the ashtangas and the, and the, and the, and the hathas, they, they are in intense workouts. Um, the, the, uh, the more parasympathetic activated classes are the yin yoga. The walking, the, qi, the qigong, the tai chi. I like a good workout, don't get me wrong. And obviously I do some of it in my physical structure. But for the most part, at 53 years old, I work on much more mobility stuff right now. It's more important for me to be mobile for my kids and have my energy and not to be out of it. Because I can throw out my back doing deadlifts. I can, you know, tweak my shoulder and stuff like that. But the worst thing as you get older is tweak something and then be sedentary and it's downward spiral, gain weight easily. So stay mobile. Physical is a stress, so again, be honest, naked in front of the mirror, who am I? What physical activity should I be doing? Right? De-stressing or you know, high intensity. Uh, the difference between working out and working in. Does that make sense? All the exercises I showed you are more working in. And then working out is elevating the heartbeat over 90 beats per, per minute. Uh, psychic energy. You walk into uh, church on Sunday morning, there's an energy there, right? Walk into church on Tuesday afternoon, there's a different energy. You go to the, the LA Coliseum on Saturday morning and the Trojans are playing, there's energy right there. 
Come in on a Wednesday afternoon, same thing. There's a different energy. There's psychic energy all around, a psychic density in certain cities. You ever go into New York City? Wow, right? It's electrifying. Or even LA, you're like, whoa. Even in LA from Orange County, or those mountains 40 minutes away where I'm staying right now to Kirkland, right? There's different psychic energies around us. So be honest with yourself. I work with uh, Maori healers for many years, and I've seen multiple, I've seen probably 50, 60 exorcisms. Uh, and what they say is, you know, there's energy all around us, and beings of the dark don't recognize uh, free will. And they see a human being energy system, it's the most advanced technology on the, in, in the universe, uh, the Maori told me this. And so Papa Joe, the great Maori healer, he said, from here in is you. From here out is everything else. Keep it that way. So you get around some dirty energy or people being negative, you know, jump in the ocean. Ocean water, salt water is acid to bad spirits. Jump into a cold body of water, you know, sage yourself, do some meditation, but keep your energy field clear, right? Walk into an office building Monday morning. What's the energy? Friday afternoon, what's the energy? different, right? So there are psychic energies around you. Keep yourself clean and clear, right? No, be aware of uh, the energy because the seven factors of stress, stress summates in the body, whether you're conscious of it or not. Most people equate stress with an emotional outburst, but that is the sum total of an overloaded stress body, right? And stress summates. If you don't have the antidote, like sleep and clean water and clean food and good digestion and good pooping and jumping in a cold body of water or moving your body, you don't have the ability to move the energy, this stress will load up into the body. If it's ultimately not recognized, an overweight body is a stressed body. A stressed body, uh, the body's an, an intelligent biocomputer. It knows everything. It's an all-knowing mechanism. And so if you're not listening to the body, the thyroid regulates metabolism. So eventually the thyroid will shut down and you'll gain weight. And if you don't listen then, the body will get sick. It'll put you in the hospital bed. So don't wait to that. Listen to the body. Listen to the pain teacher that's guiding you. Uh, watch who you're, who you're spending your intimate time with. You know, lots of people get caught up because family's blood. We need to hang out with them for the rest of our life. Nothing could be further from the truth. If you're looking for your own long-term survival, right? As physical beings in this physical world, uh, you know, nature's first law is self-preservation. We want to make sure that we're okay for our long-term survival. We're not getting caught up in our head and going, well, what about this? And what about this? And they're, they're, they're my family and they need our love. Well, often love comes in the form of a swift kick in the pants, right? We, we want to protect ourselves. If people want to drag you down, you know, it, it's time to let them go, right? Because this can be affecting your health. Seven factors of stress that destroy health, right? So be aware of the psychic energy. Thermal, thermal stress. Is it too hot or too cold? You can, you get into, to, uh, you go shopping, you forget your coat, and you go shopping at night, right? It's a little chilly in there. You get musculoskeletal excitation. Right? It's too hot. That's dreadful as well. You know, so these things affect our stress levels, stress summates in the body. So being aware, also becoming anti-fragile. So doing cold showers first thing in the morning when you're warm underneath those covers, you walk out, you start acclimating your body, do the extremities first, put your body in cold water, get the cold all over your body, and you undomesticate yourself. Right? We're all domesticated living in these warm environments, these controlled environments. And so uh, uh, training the body to handle uh, 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 different thermal stressors will help you. Your own thermal regulatory system that's inside of your body is directly related to your immune system as well. And so cold therapy for everyone, okay? Start with the toes and the fingers first. Cold therapy for everyone. You guys have good cold shower water up here. Trust me, you don't need much more than that. You wanna do the ice baths, that's cool, I'll take you in one. But in the meantime, you've got good cold showers here. So work with your thermal regulatory system. So again, is it too hot or too cold in your office building or air conditioning or whatever? Like my body hates air conditioning. It actually affects the bladder. Um, uh, 
as well. It affects the digestion. And so, uh, also uh, the uh, fifth uh, factor of uh, stress is electromagnetic frequencies and electromagnetic radiations. We talked a little bit about that earlier. We all have these devices, and remember, there's two forces on this planet, yin, yang, catabolic, anabolic, uh, inhalation, exhalation. So you're always balancing the two, you know? Uh, and the cell phone is a tool. It's helping me communicate my messages to the world. It's truly, I see the difference it's making. My work in the Amazon started in 2006. I started posting footage of Indian shamans uh, drinking ayahuasca, all that stuff down there. Ayahuasca is everywhere now. Plant medicine is everywhere right now. If you know the story of uh, Johnny Appleseed, uh, plants use man to spread seed. Nature's first law is self-preservation. So the plants want to continue to procreate and the jungle's dying. Clearly, it's been being cut down for many years. Now you've got these fires going on. The spirit of these plants are asking to be recognized. Hape, cambo, Bufo, um, um, ayahuasca, uh, uni de gato, cat's claw. It's everywhere in the world right now. Ayahuasca is, you know, I started posting footage years and years ago. People, you got any scientific proof for that? What is that Indian weirdo shamanism stuff that we, blah, blah, blah. Now it's commonplace, right? So that shows to me the awakening is continuing uh, uh, to, to, to happen. So. Social media, electricity is a good thing. Elon, not Elon Musk, but Nikola Tesla invented the 60 megahertz cycle uh, many years ago and told JP Morgan, the 60 megahertz cycle is no good for the human electrical field. But they already ran the copper wires across the United States and they didn't want to change it, it was for money reasons. He also invented, funded by JP Morgan, uh, free energy. Uh, but when uh, J.P. Morgan wanted to know uh, how to monetize that or how to meter it, Tesla was like, it's free. We want it for the people. This is going to free humanity. And so they burnt his laboratory down to the grave and uh, discredited him. And so, uh, but all this information is starting to come out right, uh, right now. And so electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic frequencies, we're going to upgrade those systems as well. Papa Joe, the great Maori shaman, said the human being is the most technological advanced piece of equipment in the whole entire universe. So these computer devices are prosthetics compared to what the human brain can do from telepathy to teleportation, etc. So whether you look at Operation... Okay, I got that. Uh, you know, the, a lot of these... Uh, you look at the uh, Philadelphia experiment, the Manhattan Project. I mean, a, a lot of these uh, things I'm talking about have all been um, uh, researched, and it's just time to start calling these forth, uh, which is, in my humble opinion, is what's going to happen. In the meantime, be mindful of your cell phone usage, of your Wi-Fi usage, and we got Wi-Fi all in the area, too. That's another reason why grounding into the earth barefoot is going to it has negative redox potential and it's going to ground out the dirty electricity. The wattage, the voltage, the yang element, the heat element, the inflammation element into the earth. The earth has a negative redox potential, which by definition is an antioxidant. It's going to have a positive charge. The negative charge takes the positively charged toxins out of your body and electricity is one of those. Just pay attention to be mindful of your usage. Um, you don't need to treat it like a boogeyman.